Good morning guys, James here from Car Radio, etc. Boat. Boat, 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 boat. Not doing a car today. I'm doing a boat. So, this is, I don't know like what the model of it is. All I know is that it's a Bayliner bow rider. So like couches up the front and stuff. Um, actually my first boat that I'm doing all by myself so we've got uh, some rear speakers back here they're getting replaced probably gonna upgrade them to some Rockford Fosgate 8 inch speakers either Rockford Fosgate 6 inch or 8 inch speakers are gonna go up the front in the sides here this is the factory stereo that's powering it it's just real stock basic sort of stuff I'm gonna take that out probably put like a pocket or something in that location and then over somewhere here on the dash we're probably gonna put one of the no not that one of these here ultra compact digital media receiver so it's basically just a little panel with some buttons and a volume knob on it and it has usb bluetooth and auxiliary inputs no radio or anything like that but he just wants to be able to play music off his phone and it's nice and compact as well so i can just mount that somewhere on a surface and then this doesn't have a built-in amplifier so what we're using to power the speakers is going to be one of these cool marine grade Rockford Fosgate uh, four channel little amplifiers these are like the same as the uh, Rockford Fosgate T400X4AD which I always rave about except it's marine grade so everything is you know waterproof essentially there they are we haven't got the gear in yet because this is actually my first time seeing the boat so what I wanted to do was kind of figure out a game plan first where everything's going to fit what size speakers to go for what color grill order it while I'm waiting for it to arrive the next day I'll probably try and get some wiring stuff done so that's what I'm going to be doing today so what I think I mainly need to do now is figure out what speakers are going to fit so I'm going to make up a template which is going to be the same sort of profile as the grill for the 8 inch speakers and then see where that's going to fit in the boat okay guys Literally like two, three hours later, I've just been on the phone with the suppliers, on the phone with the customer, back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what it is we're gonna do. Cause there were availability issues and potential discounts, but not potential discounts and pricing issues and all sorts of horrible conversations back and forth. What we've decided on doing, we're putting a set of eight inch speakers in the back, a set of eight inch speakers in the front, we're going for the PMX2 here, which is the next one up that has the screen on it because they don't have the PMX0 in stock. So that's what we're doing, the PMX2. And then they don't have the Rockford Fosgate uh, Marine Grade T400X4AD in stock, which is the, like the Marine Grade 4 channel amp. And I spoke to the customer and he'd really prefer to wait for that to become available rather than putting a non-marine one in, which is a smart decision. So we're gonna do the PMX2 and the four speakers hooked up together, just on the built-in amplifier for now, and then when the amplifier arrives, he'll come back and we'll install that and it'll be louder. So that's what I have to do. I've already started looking at, you know, wiring and stuff like that. Basically, I need to get four speaker wires up to around about here. Oh, is that the keys for the boat? In case I wanna start it and drive off. So yeah, I need to get four sets of speaker wires up to around here, a, p a permanent and an earth. Well, not an earth, this boat doesn't have an earth, it's just the negative terminal of the battery. And I think that's about it. I would like to try and hook up this, um, this auxiliary port here, which has cables coming out the back of it. I would like to try and hook that up to the auxiliary input of the unit, which is going here. But we'll see if this reaches or not, I may have to extend it. I have to get wires all the way around the front of the bow and back to here, hidden up inside there somehow. So I've got a fair bit of wiring to do in the meantime and it's not going to be particularly interesting so I think I'm going to chuck it on a time lapse. I'm going to use the wires that are already in the rear speaker holes because we've determined that they're actually quite thick and pretty good quality, like they're thick enough to handle a decent amount of current. So we're going to stick with those new speaker wires for the front, although actually no, I'm going to use the speaker wires that are already run around the bow for the front speakers and then there should be some powers in it. it's basically just a matter of finding the right wires extending them where i need to and getting them ran up to near this location here and also hooking this aerial into the line somehow as well so yeah crack into it
Okay guys, so a fair bit of progress made. Been a few hours, gotten pretty much all the wiring done. So it's gonna be really hard to see because it's dark in here. Or oh, under here it is anyway. But basically what I did was I unloomed pretty much all of this, separated out what I needed and what I didn't. Attached my new wires on, which are now popping out just here, ready for the unit. Um, and then loomed it all back up. I've also run a new earth wire or a ground wire from the negative side of the battery um, all the way inside the conduit along up to here because the one that was in there was pretty small and probably not going to be good, uh, big enough for when we do install the amplifier. I do have yet to extend the RCAs for the auxiliary port out and around to here, pardon me. But what I want to do now, oh I've also prepped these wires here for, for like the speakers as well, put some crimps on them. But what I do want to do now is um, I'm going to try and make like a template ring, a template ring for the uh, for the speakers using the supplied information off the Rockford Fosgate website about the sizes and stuff out of this piece of wood. I'm going to try and make a ring which represents the outer, outermost diameter of the grill and also the mounting diameter. So we're making that ring and then I can position it on the boat and try and mark out where my hole is going to be and then maybe cut some holes out. So I'm going to use the router. I've measured the distance between here and here. Should all work out. I'll measure it once I've finished obviously. Even though this is like a, a bung, I'm using this because it's a bung bit of wood that I wasn't going to use for anything since it's like all bent out of shape and stuff. But I think making this small little piece it should be fine for the, uh, for the size that it is. Just need to make sure that this is going to, yep that should be fine. Cut a hole and I need to push this down as well. There's my outer diameter cut out. Now I can cut the inner hole out of this. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you. So now this should be 230 millimeters wide the whole way around and that looks pretty good to me yep 230 230 awesome so now we need to cut out the inside hole which I know is 181 millimeters so I divide that by two and I get 90.5 millimeters and I need to make this distance 90.5 and since I'm cutting an inside hole, I put the bit with its tooth to the outside and then measure from that point to the centre of this bolt and make it 90.5. In fact, what I'm going to do is actually just make it 91 because sometimes it's better just to have a, a slightly sloppy hole than have it too tight. Otherwise, if it's too tight, then it can be real annoying because you defile out the hole to make the speaker fit. There you go, 91 millimetres. Yeah, we've got a ring with a little nub there. Just got to file that bit off. Ooh, it's 180.5. See, it's a wee bit small. Oh, maybe I'm just not, maybe it's, yeah, it's about 180.5 the whole way around. So I have cut, made this hole a little bit too small. It should have been a bit bigger, but that's okay because it's not in the boat. So now I can put this into position on the boat, mark out some holes, and at least I know that I have to go just a smidgen bigger for this hole when I cut it out. So the whole reason I've made this is because I want to start cutting out some holes so that they're all prepared for the speakers to go in. But obviously I don't have the speakers here to measure up. So I've made this ring based on the dimensions off the Rockford Fosgate website. 
and the outer dimension represents the total width of the grill once it's on so that if I'm so that if I cut a hole it's not going to wind up like that overhanging and the inner dimension represents the mounting hole for the uh, speaker so that I can cut it and then the speaker should just slot in so for the back here uh, now this piece of wood is a wee bit warped so I'm pretty sure yeah it's warped that way a wee bit so if I put this way then I can count for that so this piece of fiberglass appears to curve that way a wee bit so I want to go down a bit lower and yeah I reckon about there where does it stop curving it's hard to tell actually I might get my ruler what I need to do is see where this piece of fiberglass starts to curve Oh well, wow. it's curvy almost the whole way over by a small degree because my rule isn't rocking. Okay, well that's just not much you can do about that. So what I think I need to do therefore is go as low as possible. Probably about there because I don't want to go like too in behind this cushion here because then otherwise the grill will be pushing against it. So if I go just in line with there, as low as possible. I think that's probably where my hole's going to be. And just check behind there, yep that should be fine. There's a wall just here and I've got about, looks like 60 millimeters to be safe of room that way. It's going to go like that against there and there I think. A wee bit up off that lip. That's probably what I think I'm going to have. And I need to make sure I've got 60 mils. Yep, only 45 so that's good. Now I can mark this. Remember I know that I made this hole slightly too small and also the vivid doesn't go right on the line, it actually goes to the left of the line. So I know that I need to go to the outside of this line when I cut it. Here we go. Here's that one. There we go. Let's see how um, equal I got them. Let's do some measurements. There we go. So now I can just put little crosses through these ones. Cool. This vivid will just meth off later once I've cut the hole. Cool. I'm happy with that. Uh, the front ones. So this sits in here. And this is the total size. Oh man, it's close going to be as far back as possible to, to avoid the uh, curve but how do I figure out how far forward to come I think I have to be as far back as possible because I don't want to overhang in that obviously it's curvy there as well the straightest part is right about here I think about there so what I could do is use these two and then mark the center point and then that's going to be the top of my yep that's what I'll do because it'll be the same on that side these are like 168 apart, which is 50-84. Looks like it's going to be about there, guys. There we go. That's that one marked. Get this side. There we go. That's the four holes marked. Hopefully they work. Right, so now I'm gonna try and cut out some of these holes. I'm gonna start in the back and widen these holes out to what I need. Obviously working with fiberglass, you want to be fully protected. Eyes and uh, respiratory especially. Don't wanna breathe that shit in. I'm using, now see we don't do heaps of fiberglass work so we don't have all the fancy tools and things that you're supposed to use with you know or made for fiberglass we've just got some bits designed for metal here they've got small teeth on them i'm going to go really slowly at a high speed and hopefully it works nice and cleanly and my breath is fogging up my glasses so i can't really see what i'm doing i've also put some duct tape on the bottom of the jigsaw so that it doesn't scuff up the uh, fiberglass as well let's have a go let's just try cut a line but not on the line yet let's just do it Okay. 
and just wanted to see what sort of quality cut it would make and it appears pretty decent not too much chipping there was a wee bit at the beginning because I went in a bit fast but if I go nice and slowly it should make a nice clean cut There we go. What a mess. <sighs> That's one. It takes a lot, seems to take a long time just to do one because you have to go so slowly. Whew. I'm gonna work out the other three. I don't think you guys need to see me do that that three more times, make another me make more mess and then clean it up. I'll check back in when I've got those done. Probably in like 10 hours or so. <laughs> got the holes done. Obviously saw that one done. This one, nice and clean. I've yet to do a vacuum though. Front left one's done, front right one. This is the loom that went to the uh, stereo that was up in this location. I'm using a couple of wires there for speakers. It was actually quite hard. I did accidentally nick a couple of wires with the jigsaw as I was doing it, because it's like loomed up along the top of here. But it's okay, none of them had power on them. And then same again here. Hopefully it's in the right place. We shall find out when I get the speakers and hopefully they fit. Land it by year. So um, now I need to do a really big vac and all I, and the only other thing I really need to do is get the wires I need from the front here for the speaker wires, put some crimps on them and then that's pretty much me done for the day because there's not much else I can do until I get some product. So I'm going to do a great big vacuum now, clean it up. And then I think I might pull it outside and let the wind get some of this, you know, fiberglass dust off it. So I need to clear out some of all this shit. Okay, so I vacuumed and tidied up, it looks pretty good. Um, I thought I might just give you guys a better idea of what I did before wiring, because I realized I didn't actually really cover it that much before when I was doing it. I kind of just did it and didn't really say what I was doing. So, this boat had this stereo in it here, this waterproof cheap sort of one, and that was powering two six inch speakers at the back. And um, there was a loom running all the way from the stereo around the front of the bow to this sort of area where the speedo cluster is getting powers and then wires went even further back to that speaker and around the back to that speaker. This loom here, you know, which I've got sticking out here, just I'm about to um, loom that back up inside there so it's out of the way. So what I decided to do, since the speaker wires that are in it are actually pretty decent, I have changed the crimps out on the wires because they needed replacing. So we've got some new crimps on there and that one as well. So to get the rear speaker wire signal. So for the rear speakers, I just found the wires up in this bunch up here. I cut them about there-ish in the middle so that it can be joined back up at these. Here they are. That's the rear speaker. Can you guys? So these ones here are the rear speaker wires which go backwards. And then I've att attached some speaker wire and extended them along to the side to here by the front panel where the stereo is going to go and then what I did for the front speaker wires is the wires that these used to be connected to that went up to the head unit coming from this direction I attached some more extensions on them and ran them to the same place and then over here once I'd cut the hole all I had to do is find the two wires that I'd attached to and get them out of the hole here so there's the front right and on the left here here's the front left speaker wires that I attached to for powers, um, what I did was, so under here, up at the back, up here, 
there's like a fuse box sort of thing. On the left hand side we've got a you know a big 8 gauge power supply from the battery going in positive and then some fuses and wires coming out. So I've just used one of the uh, spare terminals on there and run a permanent power supply from there along with the loom to here. And then I did the same with the ground. These yellow ones here as you can see, they're just that's just like a multi-terminal sort of block thing. And I just did the same thing. So I've got a ground from that point there. For accessory, there's um there's a switch here on the dash which is actually labeled accessory. And there was nothing connected to it on the back side of it. So I just found the switch up in here, which is this one here. Attached a red wire to it, run across to there. So I pretty much used all of the factory wiring, factory rear speaker wiring, used what was left for the front speakers, got my new powers, um, new pot permanent, new ground, and my switched wire comes from that accessory switch up on the dash. And also there's an aerial here. This aerial was over on the left hand side, it's just a piece of aerial wire that you just sort of mount up anywhere. And I just did the same thing for this over on the right hand side. And yeah, that's how I did the wiring in this. Just making use of, you know, what was already in here. Just need to put some crimps on the front speakers, on the front speaker wires. Oh, I still haven't gotten those auxiliary lead RCAs around the front. That's like my last sort of job for the day, if I get time. Oh, I suppose it is four o'clock, five, an hour should be enough, yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do. Crimps on the front and then run the RCAs around the front and back to here. Cool. Okay, pretty much done for the day. Just waiting on product to arrive tomorrow so I can actually put stuff in. Um, extended this auxiliary cord thing here which goes to that pocket there so I was wanting to run it with the wires up along the top all the way around to where the head unit is but I just can't really like I can't get my hand up there to like to wrap it or coil it or anything like that so I think what I'm gonna have to do is actually just try and tuck it as tightly and neatly as I can down in this sort of crack slash cavity here around the front and then sort of straight up to the head unit so that's what I'm going to try and do the trick is getting it to stay in there because it likes to sort of pop out okay so that's that run and now might be over the back there. Oh, I feel it. There we go. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Behind the carpet. There we go. Cool. Auxiliary wire. Auxiliary rain. Just got to put the head unit in, put the speakers in, and it'll be done. Catch you guys tomorrow. Today's episode of Car Radio Etc was brought to you by Sean Livingstone and his two Holden Commodores. His blue Commodore has a set of Focal PS 165FX Flex Series components running active off an Alpine PDX F6 4 channel amplifier, two shock Triton 15 inch subwoofers in a custom built ported box being powered by an Option Audio OAX 2000 Class D amplifier with an Audison Bit 10 processor controlling all of the channel outputs. A really nice build man that I know that those Alpine PDX amplifiers are you know a really beastly and awesome amplifiers I've installed a couple of them myself um, yeah the, the PDX F6 I believe puts out 150 watts RMS by 4 at 4 ohms so that means each one of your woofers and tweeters is getting 150 watts RMS which is quite a lot that's about double what those speakers are recommended for but not a problem I don't think that's a problem because you know obviously you know what you're doing and um, they're really good amplifiers, especially if you tune them well. The only thing I am slightly curious about is that you said you were, um, that you were running them active, but from the picture I can see that you've still got your passive crossovers in line there. I wonder if maybe what you meant to say was that you're running them by amped, which means that you've got a channel going into the crossover, uh, into the woofer input for the, of the crossover and a channel going into the tweeter input for the crossover. I understand what um, what you meant to say, but I do know that those yeah those crossovers actually have separate inputs for the woofer and tweeter if you want to buy amp them. 
But um, no, if I'm wrong, just let me know in the comments. But yeah, otherwise, really nice build, man. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I just want to give some uh, recognition to all the amazing support I've been having over the last uh, couple of weeks on, you know, YouTube, Facebook, and Patreon. You guys are so amazing, and it's great to see how the channel is actually influencing people and how the channel is growing. So thanks again for watching for like the 10th time, and I'll catch you in my next video. If you would like me to showcase your vehicle, you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash caraudio, etc.